OK, today we're starting. Unit five. This will be the last unit. On your final exam, and it is also. The last unit of the textbook. So we have a lot of time. Don't have to finish everything right away. We can take our time. So this unit is called going on a business trip. So let's look at some of these warm up questions. And you can think about these questions to prepare you for the lesson. Such as which countries would you like to visit? Are there any countries you wouldn't want to visit? Why? What do you think are some of the problems a business traveler might face? Would you like to travel as a business person someday? Why or why not? All right, so let's move into the reading. Tips for business travelers. Things to know before you go. John Thompson is an international sales representative for a large multinational corporation with its main office in San Francisco. He often has to travel overseas to visit factories and meet with foreign clients. Next week, he will be visiting his client in Taipei for three days before going on to Shanghai to visit another client. His secretary, Tina, usually handles his travel arrangements. She calls the travel agency to make the reservation. She has to consider factors such as the check in time, departure and arrival times, and visa requirements, if any. Once he has his tickets and travel documents in order, she calls the travel agency again to confirm his reservation. Tina is also responsible for making his hotel reservations. Since Mr. Thompson often has to entertain guests at his hotel, he wants her to make sure that a large suite will be ready for him when he arrives at his destination. When he goes abroad for business, his company pays for his flights. Mr. Thompson usually travels in business class. When he has enough frequent flyer miles, he can upgrade to first class. He's, you know, he is such an experienced traveler that when there is turbulence, he usually sleeps right through it. His only complaint is that he often suffers from jet lag especially on long trips. He usually arrives at the airport two hours before his flight is scheduled to depart. There he checks in and receives his boarding pass. He is also informed of his gate number and seat number. If he has enough time, he may visit the duty free shops in the airport. When he arrives at his destination, he makes sure his passport, visa and arrival card are in order so he can quickly go through customs and immigration. 
He has the following advice for business travelers. Always pack lightly. I usually take one check in and one carry on bag. As a business traveler, you will constantly be on the move. You don't want to worry about lugging heavy bags with you everywhere you go. Just bring the essentials and leave the rest at home. Don't carry a lot of cash. You should take most of your money in traveler's checks. Keep your receipts in a safe and separate place, so if you lose your traveler's checks, you can quickly get replacements. Credit cards can also be used almost anywhere. Try to get plenty of rest before and after your flight. If you are traveling from New York to Taipei, you don't want to suffer from jet lag. Last but not least, remember the old saying, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. Try to learn as much as possible about the country you are traveling to and follow the local customs. OK, so that is the reading. Let's take a closer look. From the title, Tips for Business Travelers, this is an article that is supposed to give the reader information and advice. But most of the article is actually about one person, John Thompson, who is a frequent business traveler. So even though the article is supposed to give us advice, it gives us advice by using an example. So the idea is that we are supposed to learn from John Thompson and that his way of doing business travel is supposed to be the best way. We also have a subtitle, Things to Know Before You Go. This subtitle doesn't really give us new information. We already know that this article is about things to know. What it does do is it makes the title more attractive because there is a rhyme, ya ring, things to know before you go. It's kind of fun. That's why there is this subtitle. So very first paragraph, the very first thing is we meet this business traveler. And it also gives us important information that his company's main office is in San Francisco, Jojing San. So his advice, uh, and also it tells us that he will be visiting his client in Taipei next week, and then he will go to Shanghai. So his business often takes him to Asia, China, Taiwan. This tells us that his example and the advice of this article will mostly be about traveling between the US and China, Taiwan, Asia. So let's look closer at this first paragraph. John Thompson is an international sales representative. In daily life, we call this kind of person a sales rep. And he represents a large multinational corporation. We can pronounce this word multinational or multinational. National, we know, means 
of a country. Multi means many. So this company sells things in many different countries. But its main office is in San Francisco, so it is still technically an American company. He has to travel overseas to other countries uh, to meet, uh, sorry, to visit factories and meet with foreign clients. A client is what we call a customer that is a business. So there, we can think of uh, companies as two kinds. One kind of company sells to people. The other kind of company sells to other companies, and we call this a B2B company, business to business. Uh, so for a B2B company, its customers are called clients. Uh, in Chinese, we call this 客户. So next week, he will be visiting his client in Taipei for three days before going on to Shanghai. So his next stop will be, after Taipei, his next stop will be Shanghai. Notice this sentence structure. The word before usually means, um, like if A before B, then A happens and then B happens. So even though the idea of this word before is something that happens first, when you use it in this kind of sentence, it tells you what is going to happen next. So A before B means first A, then B. This is A, right? A before, and then this is B. To go on just means to continue, to keep going. OK, so now we know who this guy is and what kind of business he does. We don't know what his company sells. That's not important. We only need to know what kind of places he goes to, uh, what kind of business travel experience he has. That's the part we care about. So the next paragraph is about his secretary, Tina. Of course, um, secretaries don't have to be women, and bosses don't have to be men. I think that's important to remember. In fact, uh, back before women could work, secretaries uh, were all men, and being a secretary was seen as a good way to gain job experience at the beginning of a career. This is something that often happens. When a job uh, seems less important to people, they will often think that it's a woman's job or the other direction. When a job uses more and more women for that job, pe some people will start to think that it's not a very important job. But as you can see from this article, a secretary is a very important job and it's not easy to do. Like uh, people sometimes will say that a basic job that anyone can do is like uh, working at McDonald's or like working at a 7-Eleven, but actually these jobs are also not that easy. You have to be able to organize coordinate, uh, remember how to do a lot of different things. Really, I think the easiest job is student. So this article is about John Thompson, but when we start looking at how he does his business travel, the first step is to look at his secretary who takes care of arrangements. As it says here, travel arrangements. Notice how I pronounce this. 
travel arrangements. I don't say travel arrangements. Because both of these words are nouns. Those are means travel here is a noun. Arrangement is a noun. When you put two nouns together and they create a new noun. So the meaning of travel arrangement is different from travel plus arrangement. It's a special kind of arrangement. So when you put two nouns together to get a new third noun, the stress only goes in the first word. The second word has no stress. So travel, arrangements, but when you put them together to form a new word, it is travel arrangements. A uh, more common example would be like uh, a bookshelf, shu, a uh, bookcase, shu gui, a book and a case. But when you put them together, you don't say book case, you say bookcase or like a pencil case, chen bi he. The stress is only in the first word. So what does Tina do? First, she calls the travel agency to make the reservation or to reserve. In this case, I think it's to reserve tickets. Uh, to buy the tickets ahead of the trip. Today, uh, you may not work through a travel agency. Or a travel agency, I should say. Um, it is often cheaper to buy tickets directly from the airline website. But back in 2003, travel agencies were still the best way to arrange travel. So she calls the travel agency, makes the reservation for tickets. And um, when she helps to buy the tickets, she has to think about the details, check in time. When do you have to get to the airport? Departure and arrival times. When does the plane leave? When does the plane get there? And visa requirements. What kind of papers do you need to get into another country? Uh, visa, Chenzhen. We saw this uh, last semester in the final exam. Visa is also the name of a credit card, right? And the reason is that company was one of the earliest credit card companies to work in different countries. So you can take one credit card and you can use it in many different countries. So they call their company Visa. Notice this, if any. When you add that kind of thing in parentheses at the end, it gives the reader options. So sometimes when you visit another country, you don't need a visa. We saw this last week or maybe the week before. Taiwan's passport can get you to many different countries without a visa immediately. So visa requirements if any means if you have visa requirements tina takes care of them if you don't don't worry about it so these are the different factors in su that she has to consider to think about okay so she thinks about them and then she buys mr thompson's plane tickets once he gets those tickets and the travel documents in order, in order usually means in the correct order. First, the first one, second, the second one, and so on. But it could also mean everything is correct, everything is prepared. Once you uh, have everything in order, or once you get everything in order, that means that all of the documents are ready. And it doesn't have to just be documents. It could be any kind of business. 
somebody could say, well, that seems to be in order. And that means that everything is correct and proper and and fine. So she has prepared his tickets and travel documents. Then she calls the travel agency again to confirm his reservation. So the idea here is she calls the travel agency, buys the tickets. Wait, 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 sorry. She thinks about Mr. Thompson's schedule. When does he have to get there? When does he have to leave? She uh, asks him for his personal information. Then she calls the travel agency to buy the tickets. When she has the tickets, she finishes planning his schedule, makes sure he has all of the necessary documents. Then before the trip, like a few days before, maybe one week before, she calls the travel agency again to double check that there is no problem. So it's not like she calls the travel agency twice in the same day. You don't have to do that. Um, so these are the tickets and the schedule, but she also has to make his hotel reservations. She has to make sure Mr. Thompson has a place to sleep when he gets to the other country. So she's responsible for something. The word for to be responsible for. To make a reservation. We saw this here, right? To make a reservation. Uh, since Mr. Thompson often has to entertain guests at his hotel. To entertain someone, we know the word entertainment, something that is fun, something that you can watch or listen to and enjoy. But the verb to entertain uh, can mean to uh, host in this case. To entertain guests means to host guests, to be like the host of a party he will invite people to his hotel room uh, for drinks and conversation. So to entertain someone doesn't just mean to give them a good time. It can also mean to be a host for someone. We can also use the word entertain followed by. Uh, like something like ideas to entertain an idea to entertain a suggestion to entertain a recommendation. Here, the word entertain means to think about. It's very similar to consider, but consider is more serious. Entertain is more like, OK, I'll think about it a little bit. So Mr. Thompson will host guests at his hotel. Uh, notice that here it is at his hotel, not in his hotel. When uh, this phrase at his hotel is not about the space, it is about a point on a map. If you want a phrase with space, you would say in his hotel room. The word room would let the reader know you're talking about a specific physical space. But if you're only talking about the idea of a hotel as a place, as a point on the map, you would use the word at. At is always a very specific point. Therefore, he wants her to make sure that a large suite, a suite, is not just a bedroom. It's a bedroom. It's a living room. It maybe a large suite would have a dining room. Uh, so in Chinese, we usually call this uh, da tao fang. Will be ready for him when he arrives at his destination. So Tina also has to think about this. What will Mr. Thompson do in the other country? 
if he needs to hold parties and and uh, invite people to his room, he will need a big room. When he goes abroad for business, his company pays for his flights. Yes, this is why um, the more expensive plane tickets are called business class, Sang Wu Sang, because the person doesn't pay, the company pays. Same for the hotel room. He doesn't have to pay for the hotel, the company will pay for him. Often companies will actually give their business travelers a company credit card. Um, so anything that they spend money on during the trip is paid for by the company. Um, technically, this is he, uh, the business traveler is only supposed to use the company credit card for things related to the business. So if you buy a gift for your husband or wife, you're not supposed to use the company card. But usually, um, because those kinds of souvenirs, Jinping, and gifts are not very expensive, um, the company doesn't care very much if you spend an extra like 500 NT on a gift. But you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to spend your own money for things unrelated to the business. Flight, we talked about this word last time. Um, it could mean flee, right? Tao pao. It could also mean fly, fei. So here it, it's the noun form of fly. Ta de hang ban. So he travels in business class, sang wu chang. The other classes are first class, and economy class, Jingji Chang. Um, frequent flyer miles. So if you um, join an airline's frequent flyer plan or rewards program, or there are different names for these. Um, the more you fly, the more points you can earn. And these points are called frequent flyer miles. Li chen dian shu. Right, just like if you go to a coffee shop, they will give you like a card to uh, collect points, ji dian ka. When you take an airplane, they will also let you collect points if you join the program. And um, there are many things you can do with these points. You can get a discount on future plane tickets. You can get like a free meal. You can use the airline's lounge, xiu xi si. Uh, maybe you can get like a free car rental, zhu ce mian fei, something like that. Um, so these are called frequent flyer miles. Flyer is a person who flies. Here's the thing you can see on the bottom, right? Microsoft spells the word flyer with a Y. Right, F-L-Y-E-R, but the textbook spells it F-L-I-E-R. Um, both are fine. But when you choose one, you need to use the other one for the other meaning of the word flyer. Flyer has two meanings. First meaning is someone who takes a plane. The second meaning is, in Chinese, we call this a DM, a paper commercial. It's also called a flyer. OK, so why do we call it a DM? DM is short for direct marketing. So the idea is a salesperson will come up to you and directly give you the commercial. Um, but in, in ordinary American English, those are called flyers also. So if you spell 
a plain traveler with a Y, then you need to spell the commercial with an I. And if you spell a plain traveler with an I, you should spell the commercial with a Y. One or the other. So when he has enough frequent flyer miles, he can upgrade to first class. Senji Tang. Upgrade, Senji. You can see, right? Up and grade. Literally, it just means sun and ji, ji bian. Um, he's such an experienced traveler that. So he basically he is so experienced that something something it's the same thing. Turbulence. This is when the plane starts to shake. Luan liu. The word turbulence just means some kind of disturbance. Uh, 一种紊乱, 一种晃动. So, uh, but used for a plane trip, it refers specifically to when the plane starts shaking. Turbulence is not dangerous. Very, very, very few plane accidents are because of turbulence, very few. And in fact, uh, plane accidents in general are very, very rare. Every day, thousands of airplanes take off and land with no problem. Plane travel is actually much safer than traveling by car. Traveling by car is actually quite unsafe, it's quite dangerous. But traveling by plane um, is very, very safe. Everybody is afraid of plane crashes because it's hard to live if you go uh, go through one. It's hard to survive a plane crash, but plane crashes happen very, very rarely. So here it says he's so experienced that when there is turbulence, he can sleep right through it. To sleep through something means it, ha it uh, you're asleep and it happens and you don't wake up. His only complaint, which means the only thing he is not happy about, is that he often suffers from jet lag. Shicha. Um, jet refers to the plane. The word jet actually means pansa. And it it specifically it's talking about the engine, pansa inching. Jet engine. But really it's talking about the entire plane. Most planes today, especially if you fly to another country, most planes use jet engines. So it's using one part of the plane to talk about the entire plane. So jet engine, jet plane, jet lag. Lag, if you play video games, you will know this is when there is a time difference. So a jet lag is the time difference caused by taking a plane trip. Uh, especially on long trips. So this is, uh, he suffers from jet lag. To suffer from something usually means, uh, usually you would say you suffer from an illness, senbing, or you suffer from some kind of injury, so sang, something that causes you to be uncomfortable. Uh, you can use this phrase, to suffer from. So here he's suffering from jet lag. This is his only complaint. Complaint in Chinese, we call this bao ren or tou su. It depends on the situation. To complain, the verb, no t, complain, is uh, bao ren huo tou su, the verb. But usually, if, if you are talking about tou su, you would say to make a complaint. The longer phrase means that it is a more formal process. So 
okay, let's stop here. i'll give you some extra time to get to the other classroom.